So you might find yourself in a situation where you have uh, an x and y axis and you've got some sort of function like this uh, and you want to find the area above the curve and below the curve. Uh, so if you're doing that, you've got to be a bit tricky with it. Let's uh, try this one, see how we go. First step is going to be sketching uh, our graph. So the graph we're sketching is y equals e to the x minus 2. Uh, now this is an exponential function, so it's going to look something like that. Uh, we don't know exactly how it's going to look, but that's the basic shape. Uh, all right, so let's find out some key points, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So I'm going to find the x-intercept by letting y equal 0. So 0 equals e to the x minus 2, um, which means that 2 equals e to the x. I can write that in um, logarithmic form, and I can say that that is ln2 equals x. Now, ln2, you can put it in your calculator. It's like 0 0.6 something rather, not that it matters. Uh, that's going to be my x-intercept. So I'm just going to put it in here, ln2. All right, so I can don't use the calculator at the moment. I'm just going to use that as my exact value. Now, I'm going to have to do the same. I'm going to have to find my y-intercept here by letting x equal 0. Uh, find y-intercept, let x equal 0. Uh, so y equals e to the 0 minus 2. e to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 2. So y is negative 1. OK, so I have another value here at negative 1. And I can draw a sketch. It's an exponential function, so it's going to look something like mm, heading off there into space. All right, so there's my sketch. Um, now it says find the area between the curve and the x-axis from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So I need to find the area uh, between the curve and the x-axis between this point, x equals 0, and this point, uh, x equals 2. So those areas are here and here. Okay, so uh, now that I know where those areas are, I just need to find the, the two areas. And the way that I'm going to do it, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it, um, but I just need to write in my area. So the area is going to be equal to... I'll deal with this bit first, this, this bit here. So it's the integral between 2 and ln2. and ln2 uh, of our function, which is e to the x minus 2. Um, and now what do I do? Well, this bit here was easy because it's like a, a, an, a positive area. This bit's going to be like a negative area, uh, but I can make it a positive area by swapping around my bounds. So I'm going to add on my next area, which is the integral of 0 to ln2. Um, of e to the x minus 2. And I really need like a little um, with respect to x here and with respect to x here uh, just to make things a little, little more serious. Uh, from here, it's really just a matter of filling in the blanks, substituting your values and hoping that you get the, the maths right. So I'm going to do it here. You could pause it and do it yourself if you want to try it. Um, so uh, I'm finding the integral of this, which is e to the x minus 2x, uh, square brackets, between 2 and ln2. And I'm adding in uh, the integral of that, e to the x minus 2x, uh, between 0 and ln2. Uh, that looks about right. Okay, and now I'm subbing in 2 and then subbing in ln2 and subtracting one from the other. So it's e to the 2 minus 2 times 2 minus um, e to the ln2 um, minus 2 ln2. And then adding in e to the 0 minus 2 to the 0, and then subtracting um, 
e to the ln2 uh, minus 2 to the ln2. All right. Um, now, you could have done this with absolute values, but if you'd done that, um, you'd miss out on some opportunities to do some cancelling, which is really, really the key option here. So uh, let's take a look at what we have. e to the 2 minus 4 minus e to the ln2 minus minus, so plus 2 ln2 plus e to the 0, which is just 1, minus 2 times 0, which is 0, minus e to the ln2, um, minus minus, minus minus, which is plus, plus 2 ln2. All right, so we have an e squared, the only one of its kind. We have a... Um, Negative e ln2, we have another negative e ln2, so we have negative 2 e ln2. Just tick these off as I go, tick, tick, tick. I have a 2 ln2, a 2 ln2, so that's a plus 4 ln2. Tick and tick, and I have a negative 4 plus 1, uh, let's make sure that I've got that right, negative 4 plus 1, uh, that must be negative 3. Now that's a pretty good effort, but there is just one more slight little bit that I want to add to that. Uh, let's take a look at this term here. Uh, so just as a little sidebar, negative 2 e to the ln2, Let's let that equal, say, u. Okay, so um, if I were to write that in, oh, let, let's rearrange it just a little bit, make it e to the ln2 equals u over negative 2. Now, if I was to write that uh, in logarithmic form, what I'd get is ln um, u to the negative, or ln u negative 2 equals uh, ln2. So if ln u minus 2 equals ln 2, then u over negative 2 equals 2. u over negative 2 equals 2. Uh, that means that u equals negative 4. And given that u is originally that, that means that that is actually uh, negative 4. So finishing off, we have e squared negative 4 plus 4 ln2 minus 3 e squared uh, plus 4 ln2 minus 7. That's the area under the curve. We can type that into a calculator and get uh, an exact number if we, sorry, uh, an approximate number if we want, but that's the exact number. Approximately 3.162 units squared is the area under, or is the area between the curve and the x-axis, there and there. So a little bit of work to do there, it's a tricky question, um, but that's how to get it done.